Brothers, how y'all doing the Sabbath? Good. And brothers and sisters online, we say shalom to you all. Um, as we know, some of you may be sneaking out the house this Friday. Is it Friday? Was it Thursday? When is Thursday night? Don't sneak out the house Thursday night to celebrate New Year's Eve. Don't do that. We, some of us might see you. I want to open up with um, Second Ezra chapter fifteen. Second Ezra fifteen. I want to begin at, ver at verse thirty-five. <clears throat> Second Ezra chapter fifteen and verse thirty-five. They shall smite one upon another, and they shall smite down a great multitude of stars upon the earth, even their own star, and blood shall be from the sword unto the belly. So this is talking about the wars of Armageddon, which is about to come upon the earth. Start up with verse 34. Verse 34. Behold, clouds from the east. The clouds that come from the east are chariots. Like when we read about the Most High, can we get that real quick in Psalms, was it 104? You know what I want? Okay, give me that. Psalms 104 and verse 3. I'm just going here. Not, go ahead. Who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariot. So that part there, who maketh the clouds his chariots, references that the Most High does have what the world calls UFOs. He calls them clouds, which are chariots. Everybody understand that? So now when we go to 2 Ezra 15, I want you to take notes. Take notes. 2 Ezra 15 and verse 34. Behold, clouds from the east and from the north unto the south, and they are very horrible to look upon, full of wrath and storm. So these chariots, these clouds, which are chariots, are the chariots of the nations. These chariots here are not the chariots of the Most High, but are of the nations. Read on. They shall smite one upon another. And they shall smite down a great multitude of stars upon the earth. So these stars that shall be smitten down are satellites, helicopters, planes, weapons. Everybody understand that? Go ahead. Even their own star and blood shall be from the sword unto the belly. Come on. And dung of men unto the camel's hoe. And there shall be great fearfulness and trembling upon earth. And they that see the wrath shall be afraid, and trembling shall come upon them. And then shall there come great storms from the south and from the north, and another part from the west. We're coming from the west. Go ahead. Our, not our people, but America. And strong winds shall arise from the east, and shall open it. And the cloud which he raised up in wrath, and the star stirred to cause fear toward the east and the west wind, shall be destroyed. The great and mighty clouds shall be lifted up full of wrath and the star that they make that they may make all the earth afraid and them that dwell therein. And they shall pour out over every high and eminent place in horrible star. These horrible stars that we're reading about deals with the intercontinental missiles. Go ahead. Fire and hail and flying swords. The flying swords are the smaller missiles. Read. And many waters. That all fields may be full, and all rivers with the abundance of great waters. And they shall break down the cities and walls, mountains and hills, trees of the wood, and grass of the meadows, and their corn. And they shall go steadfastly unto Babylon, and make her afraid. They shall come to her, and besiege her. The star and all wrath shall they pour out upon her. So this is what we read. I wanted all of this to catch up to where we were at last week about the ten horns shall turn on the whore and hate the whore. The ten horns, which are the European Union, ten common markets, are the only ones with power enough to fight against Babylon. The Arab nations, all these other nations, they don't have the nuclear power to overcome this place at all. And even with the European Union, they still are not going to totally finish this place. That's why Christ's going to have to come and finish the job. Go ahead. They shall come to her and besiege her. The star and all wrath shall they pour out upon her. Then shall the dust and smoke go up unto the heaven, and all they that be about her shall bewail her. So now, yeah, I want you to take notice of this. It says, they shall come to her and besiege her. The star and all wrath shall they pour out upon her. Remember last week, 
where we read in Revelation 17, it said that the horn shall burn the whore with fire. That's their nuclear fire. It says, then shall the dust and smoke go up unto heaven, and all they that be about her shall bewail her. So these, the they there, the merchants of the earth, which we're about to read about in the Revelation 18. Go ahead. Verse 45. And they that remain under her shall do service unto them that have put her in fear. So the other nations, they're going to be war captives and things of that nature out there in the valley. So now, from there, give me Revelation 18. The Valley of Jehoshaphat is what I was making reference to. Revelation 18 and 2. Revelation chapter 18. Start at 1. Start at 1. Verse 1. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power. So now remember, John is on the island of Patmos. He just seen a vision of the beast with seven heads and ten horns attack the whore that sat upon the great red beast. Everybody familiar with that? Hello? All right, all right. So now, we're in chapter 18, verse 1, one more time. And after these things, I saw another angel Come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils. And they hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. So now Daniel, not Daniel, what's his name? John sees the vision of Babylon, which is America, being destroyed. Now, sometimes I hear brothers, I hear brothers ex in, interpret this by saying that this is um, the foul spirits in a cage of every unclean and hateful bird is white people running through America today. No, that's not what that's talking about. Go to Isaiah 34. Let me help you out here. Isaiah 34. Isaiah chapter 34. Remember the scripture says, how we got to read the Bible, brothers? Precept? That's right. Line upon line. Here a little, there a little. So if you want to understanding to Revelation 18, verse 2, where it talks about unclean spirits and of devils and things of that nature, you go to Isaiah 34. Isaiah 34. Let's start at verse 10. Isaiah 34 and verse 10. It shall not be quenched night nor day. The smoke thereof shall go up forever. From generation to generation it shall lie waste. None shall pass through it forever and ever. Hold on a sec. Didn't we just read that? Where did we just read that, brothers? Who's thinking? Who's thinking? Where did we just read that? Nobody has a clue. Ezekiel, where did we read that? We just read that in 2 Ezra 15. Right. Let's get that. 2 Ezra 15. I know some of y'all fell asleep already. 2 Ezra 15 and verse 44. Second Ezra 15, verse 44. They shall come to her and besiege her. The star and all wrath shall they pour out upon her. Then shall the dust and smoke go up unto the heaven. And all they that be about her shall bewail her. So now let's go back to Isaiah 34. You know what I want to do? I think I want to start at verse 1. Verse 1. And just read down. Come near, ye nations, to hear, and hearken, ye people. Let the earth hear, and all that is therein. The world and all things that come forth of it. So Isaiah is prophesying through the Spirit to all nations to come together to fight, to war. Go ahead. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations. And the reason he's gathering all nations, not for nothing nice, but because God is angry at all the nations. Read. And his fury upon all their armies. He hath utterly destroyed them. He hath delivered them to the slaughter. Their slain also shall be cast out. And their stink shall come up out of their carcasses, and the mountains shall be melted with their blood. And all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. When you see the heavens rolled together as a scroll, that's that mushroom cloud. That's a bomb effect, an atom bomb or nuclear bomb in these days and ages. A nuclear bomb effect, it rolls like a scroll. Everybody understand that? Read. And all their hosts shall fall down. As the leaf falleth off from the vine. So now what is the host shall, that shall fall? What's up there that's going to fall down? Is it talking about trees? Nope. What is it talking about? You, Obadiah. Shalom. 
It's talking about the, the satellites. Right. They're satellites. They have planes up there also. They got things up there. The most High said it's going to fall down. Come on, Captain. And all their hosts shall fall down as the leaf falleth off from the vine and as a falling fig from the fig tree. Come on. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia and upon the people of my curse to judgment. So let's look up Idumia. On the side, let's look up Idumia. I want to go to Google, look up Idumia in the Jewish library. Uh, ancient Jewish cities and regions, Idumia. Then it says slash Edom. So Idumia is Edom. Idumia is the Greco-Roman name for Edom. Idumia or Edom in Hebrew was the region south of Judea, originally inhabited by the reputed descendants of Jacob's brother Esau. Uh, Edom was periodically subject to Judea under David, Solomon, 10th century BCE, and the Maccabees, 2nd century BCE. Uh, homeland of the house of Herod. That, so remember, right there, uh, Idumia was the homeland of Herod. When you read about Herod in the New Testament, some of y'all go, Who, Who's the Herod? It said there were no natural boundaries between Idumia and Judea. So the borders were always in flux, meaning changing. The distinction between Edomites and Jews, listen to this. The distinction between Edomites and Jews was blurred by Johannan or John Hycranus. Forced conversion of Idumia to Judaism, 130 BCE. When you read in the Maccabees, you read about John, Jonathan Hycranus or John Hycranus forcing the remaining Edomites to become Jews by circumcising them and teaching them the scriptures. So that's Herod came of that group. Those were Edomites, though. That's the group you have in Israel today. That's the group you have in Eastern Parkway today. That's all of Herod. Okay, then you have a group of them that came from um, Georgia, Russia, the Khazars, who followed Judaism. But it's the same people. All right, um, that's all I want. Do me a favor, go from there and look up Bozra on Google. Go to Google, B O Z. You know I can't spell. All right, I ain't gonna read all of that. Bozra, uh, Bozra. Batra is an ancient biblical city in southern modern-day Jordan, adjacent to the modern town of Busira. Uh, that's not what I want. Let me go down. Okay, Bozrah was the capital city of Edom. That's what I wanted. Bozrah was the capital city of Edom. According to the Old Testament, the city was the homeland of Jacob's twin brother Esau. Bozrah means sheepfold and was a pastoral city in Edom, southeast of the Dead Sea. Um, but, 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 but let me just go down, let me jump. It gives various scriptures there, various scriptures. Okay, that's all I wanted. So what I wanted y'all to see is that Bozra was the capital of Edom. So this Bozra that we're reading about in Isaiah 34 is not the Bozra that's destroyed, that's over in Jordan today, that's heaps of uh, rubble, but the capital of Edom, who can tell me what the capital of Edom is today? The think about the nation of Edom. Where do you think the capital would be? Right here on the side, Benjamin. It'd be America. Yes, America would be the capital of Edom. Headquarters. Okay, let's go back to Isaiah 34. Isaiah 34 and verse 5. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia and upon the people of my curse to judgment. Right, Edom is the people of his curse because they have no... Give me that in the Bible dictionary. They are the only... Neighbors of the Israelites who receive some don't receive any, you know I can't quote. No mercy from God. Somebody, who got it for me? Somebody get it for me. Who got a Bible dictionary? Edom, Edomites. The nation and its people who were the descendants of Esau. He founded the country, so his name is equated with Edom. Can we jump down near the bottom where it says Edom figures prominently of prophetic something? Edom figures prominently in the prophetic scriptures as the scene of great future judgments. Mm -hmm. See notably Isaiah 34, 5, 6, 63, and 1. She is the only neighbor of the Israelites who was not given any promise of mercy from God. That's what I wanted right there. So now, Captain Isaac, can we go back? Thank you, Captain uh, Yashua. Thank you. I appreciate it. 
for you helping us. Uh, Isaiah 34 and 5, again. Isaiah 34 and 5. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumea and upon the people of my curse to judgment. Now we understand what that curse is. Okay, it ain't just their looks. It's more than that. They're the only one who gets no mercy from God. And think about it. Every other nation is going to get some type of mercy, but not Edom. Not that one. Mm -mm. Dang. Verse 6. You need to wonder why. <laughs> why is it that the Most High said that about Edom as opposed to everybody else? And how come they never talk about that in churches? They don't bring that up at all. Right. The, most, the answer is in Genesis 25. He just tells you because they were created that way. It had nothing to do with what they did or anything. The Most High made them to receive his judgment. Romans 9. Period. Romans 9 also. Right. Exactly. They were fitted for that thing. It was nothing that they could do to get out of it. Right. Right. Romans 9 explains that they were fitted for destruction. Fitted means created for destruction. That was their purpose. Where we at, Captain? Verse 6. All right. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness and with the blood of lambs and goats, with the fat of the kidneys of rams. For the Lord hath a sacrifice in Basra. Let me ask you all a question about that verse. Does this mean Christ is going to come down and chop up lambs and goats and uh, rams? And Is that what he's talking about? Who is Christ coming to kill? Is it animals? Is it goats running around? <laughs> oh, Michael, grab that thing and kill it. What is the sacrifice that he's going to have? Nobody knows? Go right up to verse 2. It says, for the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And he's, remember, stay right there, Joseph. He's gathering all the nations to do what with them? Not to have a barbecue. It is going to be a barbecue. <laughs> but uh, they're going to be the main course. <laughs> Go ahead, Josiah. You got other key words in the verse. Armies. Thank you. Um, it delivered them to the slaughter. Thank you. Talking about men. Right. Thank you, Josiah. Thank you very much. Does everybody understand that? Yeah. All right. So, great. so now, Captain Isaac, can we read verse... Six again. Yes, sir. Yeah, Bishop, you forgot the sacrifice is men. It's not animal. Right. It's men. It's going to be the sacrifice. The right. sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness and with the blood of lambs and goats, with the fat of the kidneys of rams. So the lambs, the goats, and the rams are the armies of the nations. Write that down. You might want to write that down. You go home tonight and goes, what does verse six mean again? Are they having a barbecue? Read. For the Lord hath a sacrifice in Basra and a great slaughter in the land of Idumea. Uh -huh. And the unicorns shall come down with them and the bullocks with the bulls. Now, 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 now. Some of y'all might get simple. Unicorns. There's mythical animals running around. It's the internet. No, dummies. <laughs> This is all a metaphor. Anytime the Bible talks about unicorns, when you look up in a Latin Vulgate or a Septuagint, it says rhinoceros. Uni meaning one horn. Okay, rhinoceros. That's what it's making reference to. Some of your Bibles might even say that, some of the older ones. So now he's just continuing on with the various types of armies. Verse 7 again. And the unicorns shall come down with them, and the bullocks with the bulls, and their land shall be soaked with blood. And their dust made fat with fatness. So here Isaiah is comparing all the armies of the world, the nations, including Edom, to various animals. And they are there for the slaughter. Go ahead. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance and the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. Now verse 8 is very important because there's a great... If, if you never watch the news, you see a controversy regarding who does the land of Israel belong to. There's a controversy. Who are the 12 tribes? We're bringing that one forth. Who is the 12 tribes of Israel? And where are they? I was watching um, TV last night with, uh, who was with me? Officer Barnabas and um, Joel. And they have a thing on Netflix where they're tr Esau is, I'll tell you, they're the devil the Bible speaks of. But they are trying, they're going through trying to find who the 12 tribes, who the Israelites are. And they come across South Africa, and there's a tribe called the Lemba. And the Edomite doesn't believe this one particular guy whose name I can't remember. The guy gets up yelling and screaming, and the Edomite goes, all right, let me take your DNA. 
He takes DNA from a lot of them. He says, all right, 50% of y'all is of Cohen. They all happy, clapping their hands. I'm like, what the hell is this? In order to check DNA, you got to compare with somebody. So they compare their DNA with Esau's DNA. I said, what the hell is this? Nobody could figure out this is stupid. This is rubbish. Nobody could figure that out. And they all clapping, banging bongos and drums. I said, they crazy. Insane. Negro hasn't figured out that Christmas is satanic. Exactly. They ain't going to figure that out. You're right about that. Where we at, Captain? Verse 8. For it is, for it is the day of the Lord's vengeance. And the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. If you want to prove you Israel, do, does the Bible say go get, D, your, get your DNA checked? What does the Bible say? How do you prove you Israel, brothers? The curse of Deuteronomy 28. That's how you prove you Israel. Not let me go to the white man and ask him, please, Mr. White Man, can you rub the spit and saliva out of my mouth and check it? <laughs> Y'all crazy. Insane. We don't. And the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch, and the dust thereof into brimstone, and the land thereof shall become burning pitch. It shall not be quenched night nor day. The smoke thereof shall go up forever. So the smoke, the, the smoke here shall go up forever. Forever, ever, ever, forever. Like we just read in 2nd Ezra chapter 15. Did we just read that? Go ahead. From generation to generation. It shall lie waste. None shall pass through it forever and ever. So now, here's another thing. You get these morons who say, oh, this is talking about Babylon over in Iraq. Are people in Iraq today? Yes. So this ain't talking about that. They say, oh, it happened already when the Persians destroyed Babylon. I'm like, hello, but people live there. This says smoke shall go up forever and ever, and nobody shall live there. Oh, People are stupid watching these dumb Jimmy Swaggett, Rex Humbard, uh, what's that other demon's name? You got Jimmy. Rex Seller. What's his name? I know Rex Humbard. Uh, Jack Van Jack, Emby. Jack, yeah, Jack, Jack Van, Van Emby. John Hagee, yeah. foolishness. Dumb. Steve Perry, there's another Edomite. <laughs> Come on. Verse 11. But the cormorant and the bittern shall possess it. The owl also and the raven shall dwell in it. And he shall stretch out upon it the line of confusion and the stones of emptiness. So the line of confusion, the stones of emptiness is hip talk, meaning it's going to be, how did this place ever rise and rule the planet? How did that happen? Is this the man that made the earth to tremble? These people that was over here? Yes, them people that was over here. That's the reason why it says there's a mystery, because they, they still have that mystery. They can never believe that this is the place. Exactly. Yep. Read on. Verse 12. Now, I want you to remember verse 11. One more time. I want to read that again. But the cormorant and the bittern shall possess it. The owl also and the raven shall dwell in it. And he shall stretch out upon it the line of confusion and the stones of emptiness. Come on. They, sh they shall call the nobles thereof to the kingdom. But none shall be there. And all her princes shall be nothing. And thorns shall come up in her palaces. Nettles and brambles in the fortresses thereof. Y'all saw that movie, Legend? Was it Legendary? With Will Smith. What's the name of it? I Am Legend. You saw how when there's no people there, and just for example, somebody going, oh, it's talking about legend. No. I'm just giving an example how you saw creatures all in there, and it's, you see the trees growing across the, the streets and all of that, and the buildings. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Go ahead. And thorns shall come up in her palaces, nettles and brambles in the fortresses thereof. And it shall be in habitations of dragons and a court of four owls. Who knows what it's talking about when it says, we already explained unicorns, meaning rhinoceroses. But now I want to see who has a thought about dragons. Does it mean Leviathan is going to be chilling out over there? What does it mean by dragons? Leon, Officer Leon. Uh, serpents. Correct. When you look it up, it says serpents. Serpents, poisonous snakes. Thing, animals within the snake family. Write that down so you don't go, oh, I'm confused. Come on. Verse 14. The wild beasts of the desert shall also meet with the wild beasts of the island. And the satyr shall cry to his fellow. The screech owl the also. The satyr is going into goats. Go ahead. The screech owl also shall rest there. And find for herself a place of rest. 
There shall the great owl make her nest and lay and hatch and gather under her shadow. There shall the vultures also be gathered, every one with her mate. Now, let's go back to Revelation 18. Now that we've gone through Isaiah 34, when we get to Revelation 18 and verse 2. Revelation 18, verse 2. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils. And they hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. This is what we just read in Isaiah 34 about the Cameron, the dragon, which is going into where it says habitation of devils, it's poisonous serpents, poisonous snakes. Everybody understand that? Everybody with me? Okay, let's read on verse 3. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Read it one more time. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. What is the wine? The wine and the wrath is really going into the same thing, but since I broke it down separate last week, I'm going to break it down separate again today. Where is the precept that explains the wine? The wine is referring to lies. Where did we go? Micah 2.11. Very good. Let's read that for us, Captain. Micah chapter 2, verse 11. If a man walking in the spirit and falsehood do lie, saying, I will prophesy unto thee of wine and of strong drink, he shall even be the prophet of this people. Very good. So the word wine makes reference to lies, falsehood. So now. Read Revelation 18 and 3 one more time. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. So people, Christians especially, get confused when they read the word fornication. Because everyone knows fornication means sexual sin. But this ain't talking about the uh, Babylon literally going around. Well, they did do that. But this is more uh, spiritual. Where did we go last week that explained fornication? Wisdom of Solomon, 14, 12. Very good. Let's read that, Captain. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14 and verse 12. What I want y'all to understand is that when it talks about wine and fornication, it's metaphorically speaking. It's a similitude. God is comparing one thing to another. Read that. For the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication. Right. Okay. Thank you very much. So now. Read Revelation 18 3 one more time. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. So all nations have drunk of the wine, which is lies, falsehood, of the wrath. I mean, wrath is anger of her fornication, spiritual fornication. Go ahead. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. So it says the kings of the earth joined with Babylon in her lies, in her spiritual fornication. Go ahead. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. So now I'm going to hit y'all with something. Something I didn't bring out last week. The main wine. Listen good to what I'm about to say. The you listening? You listening? The main wine. That the nations drunk of, which means they accepted it, that's going to bring the wrath of God upon them. Drum roll, get a drum roll. Get me Psalms 83. The Spirit took me there. <laughs> You want verse 1, Elder? Uh, yeah, let's start at verse 1. The book of Psalms, chapter 83 and verse 1. Keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. So they that hate God have lifted up the head, like it says in Deuteronomy 28 and verse 43, where it says, the stranger that is among you shall get up above you very high, and you Israelites shall come down very low. Go ahead. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. And See that? They have taken crafty counsel against who, brothers? Thy people. Go ahead. 
and consulted against thy hidden ones. We the Israelites are the hidden ones. The truth of who we are has been hidden in the earth. Go ahead. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. Verse 4 is very important. Verse 4 one more time. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Watch this. Come on. For they have consulted together with one consent. So all the nations came together and agreed with one consent. Go ahead. They are confederate against thee. Now he's going to name the, the nations. The tabernacles of Edom. That's number one nation right there. They came up with the plan. Remember when the Renaissance came back, when the Renaissance came in force, 1440, 1453, around that area, Edom was the main ones. Edom was the one that had councils with all the nations. Edom was the ones that sat down with some of the African nations, some of the Arab nations. It was Edom. Read on. And the Ishmaelites. Arabs. Of Moab. Chinese. And the Hagarines. Egyptians. That's why when you, there's a book called, what's the name of that book? The one you always got. The Be Beginner's Guide. The Black Holocaust. Can you put that up on the screen for me? The Black Holocaust for Beginners. In this book, they show you how slaves was taken to China, India. So it wasn't just the white man who had us. Many of us know about um, what the Hamites did to us. We all know what Edom did to us, and some of us know what Ishmael did to us. But very few of us know what the Chinese did to us when we were in slavery. Can you say it on the mic so they can hear you? Uh, you remember scripture say all nations come to buy the children of Israel. Yes. They are. all came. Exactly. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Um, China. Uh, it will be the Tang Dynasty. Mm -hmm. Had us from 618 to 960. Write that down. It was among the Arabs. The Arabs sold us to them. Um, the Song Dynasty from 960 to 1275. That was the East Africa slave trade. It's the same thing. And the Ming Dynasty... That's who built the um, Wall of China, with our assistance, of course, from 1368 to 1644 A.D. All right? Again, again um, Tang, 618 to, nine, to 960. Song, 960 to 1275. And Ming Dynasty from 1368 to 1644 A.D. China. Right. Get Isaiah 49, 12. Just to further prove what Deacon I thought was going over. Isaiah 49 and verse 12. Behold, these shall come from far, and lo, these from the north and from the west, and these from the land of Sinem. Sinem is China. Write that down. Sinem is Hebrew for China. Okay? We were in captivity there. Okay? That's why I want y'all, if y'all can, get this book, The Black Holocaust for Beginners. By S. E. Anderson. Thank you. Whose book was this? Was yours, Mike? It goes into the, in a lot of good, some good details in that. Okay. So now we was back at Psalms eighty-three. Psalms. Start at verse five. Psalms eighty-three and verse five. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. The tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites. So Edom is the white man. Ishmael is the Arabs. Of Moab. Moab is the Chinese. And the Hagarines. Egyptians. Gabal. African. And Ammon. Uh, Japanese. And Amalek. So-called Jewish people. The Philistines. Africans. With the inhabitants of Tyre. Another African family. Asur. Assyrians. Al also is joined with them. They have hope in the children of Lot. They have helped the children of Lot, which is Moab and Ammon. Selah. So, all these nations were confederate against us. Now, give me that in, um, I'm going to show you something. Give me Daniel 8 and 12. Let me show you what the Greeks did. I'm going to just jump back uh, historically to the Greeks real quick. Daniel 8 and 12. Daniel chapter 8 and verse 12. And in host was given him against the daily sacrifice. Now, when you read Daniel 8, it goes in, let me get it first. Ah, bear with me a second. See if I want to start above that. I might, I might not. Uh, start at verse 11. Let me hear. Verse 11. Yea, he magnified himself, even to the prince of the host, 
And by him, the daily sacrifice was taken away. So now write this down. That's talking about Antiochus Epiphanes. Some people pronounce his name Antiochus. I've seen that on the Discovery Channel. Antiochus Anti Antiochus Tomato Tomato. Same devil. One more time. Yea, he magnified himself even to the prince of the host. And by him the daily sacrifice was taken away. Uh -huh. And the place of his sanctuary was cast down. And in so that goes what we read last about Hanukkah when they destroyed the sanctuary. Go ahead. And in host was given him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression. The host that was given him, you had certain wicked Israelites who hated their own people. They made a covenant with the Greeks to be in union with them, just like in America today. Go ahead. And it cast down the truth to the ground. See what the white man did with the wicked Israelites? Together, they cast down the truth, meaning they cast down God's laws. Not only did they cast down God's laws, who can tell me what else they did? They cast down God's laws. Something else Antiochus did. He forced uh, the Jews not to be... Um be called Greeks. Right, very good. He made our nationality outlawed. He made it outlawed. Get me that. Give me the proof of that. Give me that. And uh, second Maccabees six six. I think I just want to get to the point. Here's the proof. Then we coming right back to Daniel. Is it six and six? Yes, sir. All right. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feasts. Or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. So when we go back now to Daniel 8, go right back there now. Daniel, Daniel 8, 8 verse, 12. Tw verse 12. And in host was given him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression. And it cast down the truth to the ground. So the truth that was cast down was our nationality and God's laws. Go ahead. And it practiced and prospered. You see that? And it practiced and it prospered. Go ahead. Then I heard one saint speak. No, that's all I want. Jump down to verse 25. Verse 25. And through his policy also he, he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. And he shall magnify himself in his heart. And by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes. But he shall be broken without hand. Right. God killed him with an incurable disease. Give me First Maccabees 3 and 41. Now, what I'm showing y'all is the wine of the wrath of a fornication. We always go in with America's political program, which is true. But the beginning of that was the, the, the confederacy to destroy God's people, the Israelites. And all the nations agreed. Everybody with me so far? Go ahead. First Maccabees 341. Now I went from Greece, Antiochus Epiphanes. Now I'm going to Rome. First Maccabees 3.41. No, this is the Greeks. I'm sorry. Greeks. You, you know I'll be getting stuff wrong. The Greeks. First Maccabees. <laughs> Go ahead. And the merchants of the country, hearing the fame of them, took silver and gold pretty much with servants and came into the camp to buy the children of Israel for slaves. First Maccabees 3.41. One more time. One more again. And the merchants of the country. Now, this is why I, I went here for a reason. I want you to see the key words. The merchants of the country. And the reason I want y'all to look at that word, because we're going to read it later on in Revelation 18. I don't want you confused. What does it mean, the merchants? Go ahead. And the merchants of the country, hearing the fame of them, took silver hearing and... Hearing the fame of the Greeks. Go ahead. Took silver and gold very much with servants, and came into the camp to buy the children of Israel for slaves. So this, this also precepts with Psalms 83. Go ahead. A power also of Syria and of Syria the, helped to we read this name Syria was in Psalms 83. Go ahead. And of the land of the Philistines. The Philistines we read in Psalms 83 too. Join themselves unto them. So you had many nations that joined with the Greeks, confederate against the Israelites. We want slaves too. So now, here we go. I want y'all to bear with me here. You got something what you got for me? Baruch real quick. Baruch chapter 4, verse 32. It's going to go in conjunction with Psalms 83 and Revelations at the same exact time. It's going to cover all at one time. Going right back to what you're saying, what you're going back to. Baruch chapter 4, verse 32. 
This also goes back to 1 Maccabees 3.41. Watch. Baruch chapter 4, verse 32. Now, Baruch was Jeremiah's scribe. So a lot of things that Jeremiah said, Baruch got it from him. They were, they were, sharing the same, they were saying the exact same thing. Watch. Miserable are the cities which thy children serve. Stop. It says miserable are the cities, I mean the nations where we dwelt in, where the children, God's children, are served. Go ahead. Miserable is she that received thy sons. Those are the merchants. They received our sons through slavery. Watch. For as she rejoiced at thy ruin and was glad of thy fall. That's Psalms 83. Our fall. Our remembrance of ourselves being removed. Go ahead. So shall she be grieved for her own desolation. Both sides are going to destroy them. Watch. For I will take away the rejoicing of her great multitude. Now the hurry is talking about Babylon. It's going to um, prove it. Go ahead. And her pride shall be turned into mourning. Next one, here we go. For fire shall come upon her from the everlasting, long to endure. And she shall be inhabited of devils for a great time. Where's that written at? Revelations. So it's the same thing. He says, miserable are the cities which thy children serve. That's everywhere. That's every nation. China, Arabia, Mecca. Um, uh, Palestine, Syria, we're everywhere. Iraq, Japan, everywhere. And especially, first and foremost, here. All right, that's it. That was good. All praises. From there, give me uh, Matthew 24 9. This is what something Christ said. The book of Matthew, chapter 24 and verse 9. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And he shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Y'all see that? And you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. So that went along with, if you continue calling yourself a Jew or an Israelite, you was hated. You had to conform, even after the time of Rome, you had to conform to being a Gentile. Rome picked up the same policy Greece did. Okay, from there, Numbers 24 and 9. Numbers chapter 24 and verse 9. He couched. He laid down as a lion. Talking about the 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead. He's comparing the whole 12 tribes, the whole nation to a lion. Go ahead. And as a great lion, who shall stir him up? Blessed is he that blesseth thee. Anyone that blesses the children of Israel, God says they shall be blessed. Go ahead. And cursed is he that curseth thee. So Christ said you shall be hated of how many nations? So are the other nations blessed or cursed? They're all cursed. So your little friend, Becky, is cursed too. Okay, watch this. You have many nations. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something. The nations know, the ones in power, they know what happened to us. They were in agreement with, they had everybody that sits on the thrones of these various nations. I'm talking about Saudi Arabia right now. I'm talking about Iran. I'm going to give you an example. You don't become leader of a nation and be dumb as hell. You have to know, like, I'm going to give you an example. Remember in the book of Esther, how many of y'all read the book of Esther? Remember it said the king couldn't sleep. So he started to read through the chronicles of Persia. All the records of Persia, he sat there reading. Then he came across a man that saved the king's life. And he asked, well, what was done for this man? I just want you to understand that they have records of everything. So it is today. Don't think you have people sitting in power who are dumb and don't know. And I'm going to show you they do know. Iran's greatest president. I don't give a damn. You know his name. I don't give a damn. That dude, that dude right there. I'm going to show you that dude, that devil right there. He's a smart one. He was over Iran from 2005 to 2013. He did a UN speech. He spoke at the UN. He spoke about slavery. The injustice America did to the slaves. He, he, brought, he brought that out. I need the video. Give me the video, Abiel. When he, when he gave the speech, the European Union got mad and walked the hell out. They said, this mother, mm. They walked out again. They ain't know what he was going to say. <laughs> what I want you to see is they know the history. But they will only go but so far. They will never tell us who we are. Because by telling us who we are, man, it disrupts everything. It even disrupts their plans of power. Okay, here it goes. Now listen good to what he says. 
who abducted forcefully tens of millions of people from their homes in Africa and other regions of the world during the dark course of slavery. He said Africa and other regions of the world. Letting you know he's not a dumb man. Because you ask the public, every dumb mother and their father says, I all came from Africa. He says, no, they came from other regions of the world too. Letting you know he knows the history because the first group came from where, brothers? Spain. Making them a victim of their materialistic greed in the United States and in Europe, who use atomic bombs against defenseless people and stockpile thousands of warheads in their arsenals, whose economies rely on waging wars and selling arms who provoked and encouraged Saddam Hussein to invade and impose an eight-year war on Iran and who assisted and equipped him to deploy chemical weapons against our cities and our people who used the mysterious September 11th incident as a pretext to attack Afghanistan and Iraq, killing, injuring, and displacing millions in two countries with the ultimate goal of bringing into its domination the Middle East and its oil resources. If some European countries still use the Holocaust after six decades as the excuse to pay a fine or ransom to the Zionist, should it not be an obligation upon the slave masters or colonial powers to pay reparations to the affected nations? They, they, they turned the sound down, is that what happened? They was getting too heavy. <laughs> he said that he, he was speaking about all of the atrocities around the world, but when it comes to paying us, that's where the problem comes in at. That's what he was speaking about. That's when he, that's when he Turned to his constituents, the Edomites in the wild. They said, "Listen, time now to get the hell out of here." Exactly, and they start getting up yep, and leaving. They start getting up and leaving. Go ahead. Instead of assigning a fact-finding team, they killed the main perpetrator, and threw his body into the sea. Would it not have been reasonable to bring to justice? and try openly the main perpetrator of the incident in order to identify the elements and reason behind the safe space provided for the invading aircraft to attack the twin World Trade Towers. Y'all missed that one too. He's talking about um, Saddam Hussein. He says, why didn't they try him publicly and let him speak publicly for himself to identify the elements of, the, of what caused all that turmoil. They said they killed him and threw his body into the sea. Because Saddam Hussein would talk, would talk <laughs> and say, America, put me up to this, that, and the other. They said, we don't want that. The same thing they this did is with what Noriega. he's bringing out. The same thing they did with Noriega. The same thing. They won't let none of those guys speak. These so-called rogue leaders around the world, they don't let them speak, give them an open trial. They don't want to do that. Bin Laden, none of, none of them. Exactly. Now, go to the next one. It's, it's from a different angle. I want you to see what happens. This is the same speech, but a different angle. European Union delegates to the UN Racism Conference began walking out on Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad after he denounced Israel and its creation following World War II. They sent migrants from Europe, the United States, and from other parts of the world in order to establish a totally racist government in the occupied Palestine. The United States, Israel, and several other allies had boycotted the racism conference even before it began. U.S. officials said they took the action for fear it would become a forum for anti-Semitism. At a news conference later Monday, Mr. Ahmadinejad taunted Washington for this decision. This is arrogance, selfishness, and this is the root cause of many of the problems existing in the world community. At the State Department, spokesman Robert Wood dismissed Mr. Ahmadinejad's remarks about Israel. This type of rhetoric is unhelpful, 
Uh, it's counterproductive. And as I said, it just feeds uh, racial hatred. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon opened the conference by warning that a new form of xenophobia is on the rise. He voiced regret over the boycott by the United States and others. Some nations who by rights should be helping to forge a path to a better future are not here. Outside these halls, interest groups or many political and ideological stripes shout against one another in acrimony. Other countries boycotting the conference include Italy, Canada, Germany, Australia, and the Netherlands. Later, Hong Fincher, VOA News. The Netherlands. Swat they peep. Swat, there you go. So now they try to make it like, oh, he was against Amalek, so called Jews, but no. He was comparing the way America deals with Amalek and how they deal with the blacks who went into slavery. That's what the whole speech was about. He said, you give reparations to this group who suffered for five years, but the black group who suffered 400, you don't do nothing for them. Still suffering. Man, that dude was tan on this. Oh, let's get out of here. He might blow the bag on us and bring out the dead Israelites. That's what was next. But he didn't go that far because he knew once he say that, then you got to get all them Palestinians out. They all going under captivity under us, all of them. So I don't feel bad if I don't give a damn either. So now, the next one is, y'all heard of this guy, Gamal Abdul Nasser. He was the second president of Egypt. In 1967, he raged, waged a six-day war, which he lost. But, y'all will have to Google this because it's hard to find. He gave a speech in Arabic, and he asked the question. It's on, it's on you could Google it. But they spell his name differently some places. He said, how could the Jews leave Israel black and come back white? Then he waged war and he lost. America made sure that devil didn't rise up no more. He said, kill him. So he let the cat out the bag. They said, and he did, they didn't kill him right then, but he, he died later on. But they made sure they shut him down. So now let's go back to Revelation 18. Let me get back to my point. And verse, we were at verse 3. What I wanted y'all to see out of that is that the nations were confederate against us. That they took an oath and an agreement to be in union with Esau against us. Revelation 18 and 3 again. Revelation chapter 18 and verse 3. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of a fornication. That's what we're reading in Psalms, the 83rd chapter. Listen good to what I'm saying. That's what we read in Psalms 83. All nations were in cahoots with Edom. Everybody with me so far? Go ahead. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. Uh -huh. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Go ahead. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. So now, come verse 4 says, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her. I want to pause right there. Come out of her. Christian theologians say and teach the her, which is Babylon, is talking about the Vatican. Listen good to what I'm saying. I'm preparing you for stupidity on the streets. I'm preparing you for your stupid parents as well. Because they'll be reading commentaries and, oh, yeah, let's talk about the Vatican. Right. Foolishness. Babylon is America. Let's prove that. Zechariah 2, 6, and 7. This is how you prove it. It's not the Vatican. Zechariah chapter 2 and verse 6. Ho, ho, come forth and flee from the land of the north. So what you want to write down there is land of the north, meaning North America. Go ahead. Saith the Lord. For I have spread you abroad as the four winds of the heaven. Now he says Israel was scattered as the four winds of heaven. We're everywhere. But he's stipulating and pinpointing the land of the north. This place right here. Go ahead. Saith the Lord. Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwellest with the daughter of Babylon. So it's telling you that the daughter of Zion would dwell with the daughter of Babylon. Now. Give me that Psalms 137 to prove who the daughter of Babylon is. Psalms 137, verse 7 or 8, somewhere around there. Psalms 137 and verse 7. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom 
in the day of Jerusalem who said, race it, race it, even to the foundation thereof. O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed. So Edom is the daughter of Babylon. Back to Zechariah 2 and 6. Edom is the daughter of Babylon. Come on. Zechariah 2 verse 6. Ho, ho, come forth and flee from the land of the north. So the land of the north is North America, where the daughter of Babylon is. Go ahead. Which is Edom. Saith the Lord, for I have spread you abroad as the four winds of the heaven, saith the Lord. Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwellest with the daughter of Babylon. Deliver thyself. Deliver thyself. Give me Jeremiah 51 and 6. Deliver thyself. Because there's another thought that's new in the earth that says, oh, we're supposed to get our plane ticket and flee to another country. Really? Because we just read that how many nations drunk in this wrath? All of them. All of them. There's no place you can go that's not under America's influence. Come on. You said verse 12, Elder? Verse 6. Verse 6. Jeremiah 51 and verse 6. Flee out of the midst of Babylon. See that? Flee out of the midst of Babylon. And deliver every man his soul. Deliver every man his what? His soul. So this is a spiritual fleeing. It's not a physical fleeing. Deliver your soul. Was that the whole verse? Be not cut off in her iniquity. Be not cut off in her iniquities, which are her sins. For this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. This is the time of the Lord's vengeance. Was he, that it? He will render unto her a recompense. Okay, back to Revelation now. Back to Revelation 18, 4. Revelation 18, verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people. Stop. My people. My people. Christianity says you got to know how to shut down a dumb Christian. Everybody is God's people that believes in Jesus. That is not in the Bible. That is some crap you heard on TV. Give me the proof. Give me that in Exodus. Um, Exodus. 3 and 10. I want 3 and 10. Exodus 3 and 10. God's people. Who is my people? We're going here to explain my people. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 10. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. It tells you my people is the children of Israel. My people is the children of Israel. From there, get me 2 Chronicles 6, verse 6. To further explain my people. Because Christians are dumb. These Christian theologians are set up agents of the state. To keep us in darkness and to make sure that this truth don't go out. Second Chronicles chapter 6 and verse 6. But I have chosen Jerusalem that my name might be there and have chosen David to be over my people Israel. My people Israel. My people Israel. From there, give me Jeremiah 31 1. My people. Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 1. At the same time, saith the Lord, will I be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. They shall be my people, my people, and they shall be, because he was prophesying through Jeremiah. He said, I'm going to end that old covenant and institute a new covenant, and they shall still be my people. That's what he's saying. Give me num uh, Matthew 2 and 6 for, for my people again in the New Testament. My people. Christians are dumb. They make me sick. <laughs> Matthew chapter 2 and verse 6. And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah? For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. My people Israel. My people Israel. We went from the Old Testament to the New Testament. So you got to know how to stop Christianity's Christians in their track. Close their mouths. Back to Revelation 18 and 4 again. Revelation 18 verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins. So it's telling you the children of Israel are in Babylon in the land of the north. That's what John is saying right there. The Israelites are in the land of the north, according to Zechariah 2, 6, and 7. We are dwelling with the daughter of Babylon, which is who, brothers? Edom, 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 Edom. Read it again. 
And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins. That ye be not partakers of her sins. Her sins. Let's read some of her sins. Get me Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. Saying the same thing that Jeremiah uh, 51 and 6 said. Exactly. That you be not cut off in her iniquities. Yep. Daniel chapter 7 and verse 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High. Let's talk about this white man, Edom. And shall wear out the saints of the Most High. He wore us out in slavery. He, he cast down the truth to the ground so that it would not prosper and changed our racial identities. And think to change times and laws. And think to change times and laws. One of the times he changed is what some of your families are about to celebrate this New Year's Eve. BS. Because the Bible teaches us that the new year begins in the spring. Give me that in Deuteronomy 16.1. Uh, and we're going to precept it with Exodus 12 and 2. Deuteronomy 16 and 1. Observe the month of a bib. And keep the Passover unto the Lord thy God. So the Passover comes in a month of a bib. A bib is a Hebrew word that means ear of corn, which refers to the spring. Go to Exodus 12 and 2. So it said, observe the month of bib and keep the Passover. So what else is the month of a bib in the Passover making reference to? You got to go to the precept, Exodus 12, verse 2. Exodus 12, verse 2. This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Do y'all hear that? It's the beginning of months. It's the beginning of the year for you Israelites. When in the month of Abib, when you read down, he breaks down the Passover as you keep reading down. But it's talking about the same month of Abib. So God says the year begins in the month of Abib, which is the spring. Your friendly neighborhood white man says no, 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 no. January 1st in the wintertime. So he changed that time. Another thing that this man has done, he said the day begins, what time? Midnight. 12 o'clock midnight, which under the occult, they call that the bewitching hour. Let's see what God says. Give me Genesis 1 and 5. Let's see if it's 12 o'clock midnight in the middle of the night. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 5. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. The evening and the morning were the first day. Verse 8. Stay with me. And God called the firmament heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. And the evening and the morning was the second day. So the evening and the morning, that's one day. It begins with the evening. That's what I want you to see. Sun is over, sun is down. That begins the next day according to the most high God. Verse 13. Verse 13. And the evening and the morning were the third day. Y'all see that? Verse 19. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Verse 23. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Verse 31. And God saw everything that he had made and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. The evening and the morning consist of one day. It begins with the evening. That's what God says. And guess what? When Christ returns, we're going right back to what he says. So you upholding your friendly neighborhood white man. White man, white man. Yay, white man. You're going to die with him. You're going to die with Babylon. Now, the next thing they changed is laws of marriage. They said, you know what? Marriage is no longer between male and female. It's between same sex. Give me Genesis 122. Genesis chapter 1, verse 22. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let fowl multiply in the earth. No, I'm sorry. Genesis 2. I apologize. I apologize. Genesis 2, 22. Genesis 2, verse 22. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman. And brought her unto the man. I got to pause there. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I keep, now, when we came up in the truth, it was taught, because you may hear various Israelite groups teach this, that the rib makes reference to the, his relative, a close relative like his sister. And God had them banging, and then he closed up the flesh. I'm telling you, that's not what that's talking about. And I'm going to prove that's not what that's talking about. 
Now, they're all precepts that say, as brothers, we are bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. Watch this. Read verse 22 again. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man. He took the rib from man. Made he a woman and brought her unto the man. So now the first Israelite thought is, no, that means a relative from someplace else. I'm going to show you what the New Testament, what Paul says. 1 Corinthians 11 and 8. Let's see if that's what it's talking about. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 8. For the man is not of the woman. Right, man is not of the woman because man was made from the dust of the ground. Come on. But the woman of the man. But the woman is what? But the woman of the man. The woman is of man. Woman is of man. Go back to Genesis 2. And let's read that one more again. So Paul confirms that the woman comes from man. Watch this. Genesis 2, 22. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. What does woman mean, brothers? It's telling you right there. What does woman mean? Of man. I heard a dumb Israelite say woman means slave servant to man. I said, that's not what it means. It means of man. She came from man. No, it means she's a servant, brother. Yeah, that's why you ain't got one, right? <laughs> so, what verse was that? That was verse 23. Read, verse 24. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. So, the Most High established marriage from Genesis chapter 2 between male and female. America, your friendly neighborhood white man, Babylon the Great, says no. No, 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 no. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Same sex. The next thing that they, how many of you know what the word holiday, the, web, the word from holiday is two words. Holiday, y'all know what it means? Holiday. Holy day. Holiday means holy day. So when your parents or friends say Christmas is a holiday, they're saying it's a holy day. When they tell you Halloween is a ho holiday, they're saying it's a holy day, and it's not so. Leviticus 23, verse 2, please. Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 2. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, Concerning the feast of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feasts. So here in Leviticus 23, the Most High God gave us a listing of holidays to celebrate. Not only Leviticus 23, but you have Esther. The book of Esther talks about Purim. You have 1 Maccabees chapter 4, talks about Hanukkah, which is also mentioned in John 10. Um, you have Ni the, his the story, um, Nicana. You also have, uh, give me another day. It's the day of Simon, thank you. There's a few, many holidays God gave us. But our, the America says, no, we don't want you celebrating any of those. We're going to make up our own holidays based upon ancient evil customs. And our people run headlong. Give me Baruch 114. Baruch chapter 1 and verse 14. And he shall read this book which we have sent unto you to make confession in the house of the Lord upon the feasts and solemn days. So we were, was that the whole verse? Yes, sir. So we were commanded to read regarding the feast of the Lord and the solemn days. Now you get some idiots. I got to talk about the dumb, your dumb friends again. Your dumb, the retards. Never go full retard. They say that on the solemn days of God, there's to be no gladness. Can somebody, Isaac, Captain, get me Second Chronicles 30 and 21. And then do videos condemning the brothers and the sisters who rejoice on Passover. Who dance on Passover? Who drink on Passover? Who rejoice on Passover? You got it for me? Yes, sir. Second Chronicles chapter 30 and verse 21. And the children of Israel that were present at Jerusalem kept the feast of unleavened bread seven days with great gladness. Y'all know what great gladness means? We was partying, partying. I'm telling you, so if you listen to these retard Israelites. You're not supposed to be happy. You're not supposed to be glad. What Bible are they reading? They're retarded. 
<laughs> They're reading a full retard Bible. And you a full retard, too, if you're listening to them. Yeah, we supposed to be sad on Passover. What you smiling for, brother? Take that smile off your face. You got to be kidding me. Didn't our Lord and Savior Christ rejoice and sing psalms? It said he sang hymns and psalms. In captivity, you're not supposed to be happy. What you going to say, y'all, stop? I was going to curse him out, but I ain't going to do that. <laughs> so... <laughs> There's more on that. Elder. There's more? Go ahead. Yeah. And the Levites and the priests praised the Lord day by day, singing with loud instruments unto the Lord. So we're supposed to play music and sing and dance and rejoice. God wants to see that. That's the beginning of a, of a repentant heart. He said, look, they're rejoicing in my highness. Uh, everybody understand that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Bishop, you know, that's what the spirit of hatred would do for you. You leave scripture behind thinking you and your own opinions and ideas. Exactly. That's what spirit of hatred would do. <laughs> and just in case to cover the bases, it's just, it was, we was ruling at this time. And Nehemiah did the same thing. They kept the feast in gladness. Esther, Perim, with gladness, even in captivity. So don't fall for that line. So now, Revelation 18, 4, one more time. Revelation 18 and verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. That ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. And that you receive. So we're not to partake of her sins like we just mentioned. Uh, New Year's Eve, uh, Christmas, the laws of marriage, these holidays they got set up. Um, there's some stuff I know I'm missing. I know I'm missing a whole bunch of stuff. They got, law, they got food, uh, the pork, the new white meat. People are shrimp. People are running. They changed everything that God says don't do. America says, no, you can do it. It's okay. Right. Thank you. And the Sabbath day, I'm glad. Thank, thank you. I forgot about that. How can I forget about that? They changed the Sabbath from the seventh day of the week to the first day. That's what they did. All right. So, under the Greeks, there was no such thing as freedom of religion. I want everybody to understand it. Under the Greeks, there was no such thing as freedom of religion. That's what we read in 2 Maccabees 6, verse 6. Y'all with me? All right. Rome adopted that same policy in, after 70 AD and said, no freedom of religion. You cannot call yourself Jews. They put us in slavery, changed our identities. Rome did that. Then America and her allies did the same thing. Can you give me that in Revelation 13? America did the same thing Greece and Rome did. Start at verse 13. Revelation 13 and verse 13. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. That was the dropping of the atom bomb on Hiroshima, Nagasaki, 1945. Write that down, 1945. Come on. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles. Notice it's calling them miracles. This white man's science the Bible calls miracles. Read. Which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, uh -huh. saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast, which had, which had the wound by a sword and did live. So this jumps back historically in this verse. It says that they should make an image to the beast. That's the image of Caesar Borgia, which is known today as Jesus Christ. That's how the world knows him as. It says, which had the wound by a sword, because remember, Rome fell, write this down, in 193 AD, and did live because it came back in power in 1453 under the Renaissance. Write that down. I'm going to say it again. That they should make an image to the beast. This image was created in 1453, Leonardo da Vinci, okay, which had the wound by a sword. Rome fell in 193 and did live meaning it came back in power in 1453 during the Renaissance. Verse 15. Verse 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. So the image that Leonardo da Vinci painted, they gave it the life of Christ. Leonardo da Vinci took Caesar Borgia as his model. And he said, we're going to call this Jesus Christ. You are the Renaissance image. There are many books that talk about that period being called the age of Antichrist, the age of artisans and Antichrist. Read on. That the image of the beast should both 
should both speak. This image speaks through their media, television, things of that nature. Okay? Yeah. That's why every year, like Christmas, they got a new one, a new movie called coming out called He's Risen. Something, isn't it? Young, young one too. Yeah, Young Messiah and Risen. Right. I want y'all to understand something. These movies are not, these, this rash of movies coming out about Jesus Christ being a white man is by design. It's by design to shut the word that's coming from the Israelites out. That's the point. Because we're teaching. That's why they're coming out. They say we have to get off our beds now and go to work because the Israelites, the prophecy of, the, of this Bible is coming to pass. We must offset it with lies. Exactly. That's what's happening. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Read on. Read it again. Verse 15 again. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. So he had power because they were in rulership. Understand that the white man was beginning to rule now. He had power to give life unto the image of the beast. That image that Leonardo da Vinci painted, they gave it the life of Christ. Go ahead. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. So when, so when you look at the real image of the beast, you're supposed to say that's Cesar Borgia. But you don't say that. You say that's Jesus. You know nothing about Cesar Borgia at all. Although everybody has seen him. It's in everybody's on everybody's walls. It's in their minds. It's all over the place. Cesar Borgia. But when, you, when somebody mentioned about Cesar Borgia himself, Nobody knows about him. That's the power that it was done to him. Y'all have the image of, of Cesar Borgia, but y'all say that's Jesus. Yeah, you know. Identity go, theft, so you can understand. Yeah, they go deeper. Because uh, when you're looking at America, they're called the Christian state. America really is pushing like they are the children of God. You understand when you're looking at the image they give, they say they're Christ. Then you notice that throughout America, who pushing the gospel? The, 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 the false lie gospel. Who pushed it throughout the earth? America did. But the Chinese was not doing it. The Japanese was not doing it. The East Indian was not doing it. It's America who pushing the vibe like they knew Christ. They don't know nothing about Christ. They just set a man up and give his life of Christ. While the nation is following a damn beast talking about this Christ. Y'all understood what Deacon Laba said? Because the real Christ, they didn't even give him that. They only gave him the false Christianity type of Christ. That's what y'all really see. Y'all don't. The world have not learned about Jesus yet. To be honest with you, they haven't. Re, they're learning about him through us, but they have not really learned about Christ. And then when they hear about the real Christ, then they want to get up and walk out. <laughs> exactly. All right. Uh, read that again. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak. It speaks in immediate. Television, magazines. Go ahead. And cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So what would happen if you didn't worship that image, brothers? You were killed. This is the same thing Antiochus Epiphanes did. In that, remember, you could not worship this and still call yourself an Israelite. What came with this image was a new identity. Y'all understand that? You had to conform. Just like, Can we read that again? 2 Maccabees 6.6. 6. 2 Maccabees 6 verse 6. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feasts or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. I want verse 9. Stay right there, verse 9. And whoso would not conform themselves to the manners of the Gentiles should be put to death. It's the same thing that we're reading in Revelation. It's the same thing we just read in Revelation. If you did not conform to the Greeks' religions, you were put to death. America did the same thing. If you did not conform to their Christian religion, their Christian identities, you were put to death. That's what they did to us. They show you that. I'm going to give you an example that we all know. The, the clip with Toby on, what's the name of that show? On Roots, where they gave him the name of Kunta Kente. And he didn't want the name. He said his name was Toby. They beat. I had it backwards. Okay, his name was Kunta. I'm sorry. It's been a long time, brothers. They gave him the name Toby. Okay, his <laughs> name was Kunta Kente. They gave him the name Toby. He didn't want the name Toby. So they beat the hell out of him to the brink of death. He didn't die because he eventually accepted it. That's why y'all got them little strange... So I can say that now. Y'all... Y'all got them little funky names. Anderson, the Coopers, uh, whatever your names are. Seafoods. <laughs> Smiths, Rodriguez, 
They beat the hell out of your foreparents and made you take them names. Okay. And you had to worship the image of the beast too. Okay. Yeah, Bishop. Hey, I'm, with you. I'm with you on that. That's why they have to change the name. I'm with yeah, you. On that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, and also. Say, we all with them, right? Wait, do you, wait, Lava? Hey, and no, also, we, right? We with you. We with you. We with you. <laughs> also, also, what they did also, they put an image behind uh, when they were killing, our, killing us and saying, um, that we got to worship the image of the beast. They also paint an image that we was worshiping. We was into paganism and worshiping all type of wickedness. We was uncivilized. They put that image behind it so they could say, okay, by we bringing you all to Christianity, we civilize you all. You understand? And teach you all some good. You know, that's what the white man did. But before, when you go back in the history, a lot of our forefathers, they was keeping the laws of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They was not savages. They was not worshiping idols. You understand? So that's what the white man did. Right. That's why when they're in their media and in their movies, they always paint, paint us as um, savages running around butt naked to destroy that image that we was a civilized people worshiping the one true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now, now if you notice, the elder mentioned um, earlier that they, Caesar became Jesus Christ. We use the name Jesus Christ, right? So people go, oh, you see, you say Jesus Christ is, is a white man. Okay. Behind the, the image of Jesus Christ, the white image, comes a doctrine behind it, behind the image, the false image. Depending on your actions is who you are serving. Right. For example, if I'm serving Jesus Christ, the black Messiah, I'm not going to be teaching things like nations can be saved or pedophilia, rape, don't keep the Sabbath, um, sleeping with someone's wife, that's worshiping the white Jesus. Because that's what Christians do. So whenever you hear Jake say, don't say Jesus Christ, say Yahweh Shai, and they're doing what Christians do, they're calling Caesar Yahweh Shai. You understand what I'm saying to you? So again, I'm going to say it again. Oh, you, you went deep. You went deep. You got to uh, hit him again. I'll say it again. I'll say it again. Too much butter. I'll say it again. Too much butter. Slow it down. Slow it down. <laughs> The image that the world gives us today is Jesus Christ is the white image. And we, we call Jesus Christ in this room, the black Messiah, Jesus Christ as well. So people will say, well, if you say Jesus Christ, you're referring to or worshiping the white image. Correct? You got me? When you're worshiping the Lord and Savior and his Father, it's through the actions, not the image or the name. It's the actions. So... In the Christian church, they worship him doing what? They, saw, they have Sabbath on Sunday. They don't keep the holidays at all. They teach faith-only doctrines. Just faith, grace, faith, no laws. That's Caesar you're worshiping. You have Israelites that do the exact same thing that those who worship Caesar, the white version, do. So, and they call him Yahshua, or they'll call him Yahawashai. So really, in reality, based upon their actions... Regardless of the name they use, they're still worshiping Caesar anyway. You know what I'm saying? So if I'm calling him Jesus Christ, and I, we all know in here he's a black man, the image is in here, we have the image here, and we're keeping the commandments as the Bible says, and we're not teaching immaculate conception, because we're calling him Yahweh Shai, teaching immaculate conception, you're still worshiping Caesar, regardless of what name you call him. You understand? So based upon your actions, um, proofs, who you're actually serving, whether the white version or the black one. We in here use the English name and call him Jesus Christ, the black Messiah. If you're calling him Yahweh Shai, teaching things contrary to the Bible, you're, you're calling Caesar Yahweh Shai. Period. That's what I'm saying. Let me ask you a question. <laughs> Let me ask your brothers a question. Uh, read, that, read that precept again. Second Maccabees 6 and verse 9. And whoso would not conform themselves to the manners of the Gentiles should be put to death. Then might a man have seen the present misery. Now let's meditate on this thing. Who was the greatest man who ever lived on earth? That all human beings respect. It's Christ, right? For them to put their image up, what they're telling the world? We better than all nations. Because they're using the great men on earth and saying that, the great men on earth coming out of us. So they are all nation bowed down. Remember, right after they, they dropped the bomb, then they make their image to be honored. 
like warm is back up again. They're telling these nations that y'all should bow down to me because Christ is in me. Well, after they did the wicked things they did to, to the nations. Basically, what I thought, what Deacon Ithon was saying was that, like the scriptures say, by him actions are weighed. That's the point that he was making. In reference to Cesar Borgia versus the Jesus Christ thing, when you got Israelites that are basically doing the same thing that Christians do, the only difference is that one call him Jesus and the other one call him Yahweh Shai. But their actions still reflect Caesar Bogier, reflect the image of the beast. That's what he's saying. He said, that regardless of, of what you're calling him, if you're following what the scriptures say, then you're following what Christ really said in the Bible, the true one. Y'all understand the difference? A lot of people throwing, the bunch, throwing names at you, but then they're still behaving like the people in the churches. Get that in 2 Corinthians 11 and 4. This goes back to the point that Deacon Ithan was bringing out. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 4. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus. Another Jesus. Whom we have not preached. Right. The apostles never preached about anyone that looked like Caesar Borgia. Everybody understand that? They never preached that. Go ahead. Or if he receive another spirit. Another spirit. That uh, all nations are one spirit. Love for all races spirit. Go ahead. Which he have not received. Because they never preached that. Go ahead. Or another gospel. Another go the good news is that all races can come together. That ain't the gospel that the apostles preached. Go ahead. Which he have not accepted. He might well bear with him. And we bear with him by blasting him with the scriptures and correcting him. That's how we bear with him. Okay. So now, let's go back now to Revelation 18. And what verse we at? Verse 4. One more time. We're going to get through it. Revelation chapter 18. And verse 4, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sin, and that ye receive not of her plague. Right, because if you take part in the sins of America, you will, you will, listen good, you will be cut off in the destruction when it comes. Read that again. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins. And that ye receive not of her plagues. So her sins includes the food she eats. We have to change that. Being born again means change the foods. Because we, dis we discuss holidays. But we didn't discuss the foods we eat. We got to change our eating habits. The foods that we eat. Guess what we also got to change? The way we dress. Give me that Zephaniah 1 and 8. Because people get stupid. The way you dress stipulates what you believe in. When you see... You can see a Roman Catholic with the white, the black outfit with the little white piece. I don't know what it's called. But y'all know what I'm talking about. You see that, you know that's Roman Catholic. You see a Buddhist, you see the way, oh, that's a Buddhist right there. You know how they dress. You see a Muslim, up oh, there's a Muslim. You know, how you see what they, them dudes, they call Moors with those Kufi Fez hats. You know what they into. The way you dress will stipulate what you believe. Now look what God says here. Zephaniah chapter 1 and verse 8. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. God says he will destroy those in strange apparel. Because you always hear a lot of sisters go, not sisters, but women, God ain't going to destroy me because I dress like this. Yes, he is. That's what we just read. He is. Stop being simple. The way you, that's why he gave us a dress code. Fringes and a board of blue upon all your garments. That's what he said. Well, I don't want to do that. Then die, nigga. Die, die, die. Because you've been, we've been so miseducated here in America. Brainwashed with Christianity. We disregard what is written. And say, well, what did Rex Humboldt say? I believe him. What did Creflo say? I believe him. I believe the agents of the state. What did they say? I believe that. And then people, die. Right, and people want to waste your time. You know damn well they don't want to hear, hear the scriptures. They want to just tie you out with stupidity. Mm -hmm. That's when you have to just flush them down the toilet. If you don't want to hear this Bible, the hell would you drop dead. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> Read on. Verse, I mean, back to Re Revelation 18. I'm sorry. Revelation 18 and verse 5. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Right. One of her sins that reached unto heaven. Give me that in Obadiah 4. Obadiah verse 4. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle. And though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. That's talking about space travel. 
they landed on the moon in 1969 and declared to the world, the eagle has landed. Okay, let's go back to Revelation 18 now and verse 5. Revelation 18, verse 5. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. So God is remembering the sins of Babylon the Great. Come on. Reward her even as she rewarded you. So the you there is the Israelites. Go ahead. And double unto her, double according to her works. So guess what? Y'all ain't nobody going to march their way out of this or vote their way out of this. God said he's going to pay back double to Babylon. Exactly what Babylon did to us, Edom did to us. God said repay them double. Go ahead. In the cup which she hath filled, filled to her double. Mm. Go ahead. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously. So you know why that's important? Because some of these people today, some Israelites, look at the white woman and want to think that they can save the white woman. That's a sick negro. That is a sick negro. That's a sick mind. The Bible says these spirits shall get double. And these negroes say, no, no, not my Edomite. No, your Edomite's going to get double too. They're all going to get double, every last one of them. Go ahead. Come on. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her, for she, for she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. So America has established herself as a queen. Like you can read about that in Isaiah, is it 47? Where it says, I, I'm a queen forever, that one. Saying the same thing. So America and her allies have set themselves up as a queen. Go ahead. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, Death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. That's what we read in Revelation 17, and what verse was that? 16. Read Revelation 17, 16. That's what we read last week. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast. The ten horns are the European Union, the ten common markets. Go ahead. These shall hate the horn. These shall hate Babylon the Great. And shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and Burn her with fire. Burn her with fire. So now back to Revelation 18 and verse 9. I mean verse 8. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her. Let me ask this. How did the kings of the earth who have committed fornication live deliciously? with her. Y'all watch the news how? Only one hand is up. All right, let me hear you, Ezekiel. What you have to do when reading this, think of the nations that have a... Go ahead, just talk before I give it away. I'll give it away. They've, en they've enjoyed um, trade, like their traffic, um, their religions, their policies. Their, um, their and what has that benefited them? It allows them to come in here, get education, you know, get all kind of programs, get their businesses started, right. and they go back and build. And it benefits businesses. them financially, economically. Yes, Jonah. I was about to say that uh, they get taxed less. Right. Uh, they get more benefits. Or they, each time a country trades, they owe a certain uh, cap off of the, the revenue that they, they earn. Right. Exactly. You know they got grants for these other nations that come here. You, they don't, you don't got to ask them, what is your credit report? They don't need no damn credit report. That's for us. The other nations, oh, you're a chi China man, you're going to open a Chinese store? How you going to make, if we give you $2 million, how you going to make that back? I open up a store in Niggaville. They go, oh, you're going to make that money back real quick. Here you go. And they give them a grant. And they open up a store. That's what they do. Okay, where were we at, Isaac? Verse, verse 9. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. They live another way. They live deliciously. They got, remember where they sent, when they sent, wherever they sent the 12 tribes of Israel as slaves. You know, that was hundreds of years of free slave labor. Y'all realize that built up the economies of these nations? Yeah, yeah, but Bishop, they also send their kids here to learn what America and bring it back to their country. That's Second Ezra 16 and verse 46 about them living deliciously. Second Ezra chapter 16 and verse 46. And 47. For strangers shall reap their fruits. and Their, their fruits is our fruits. 
Our labor. Go ahead. And spoil their goods. Rob us. Overthrow their houses and take their children captive. Took us as slaves. Go ahead. For in captivity and famine shall they get children. That's talking about us. Go ahead. And they that occupy their merchandise with robbery. This is this land is our merchandise. They stole this land with robbery. Go ahead. The more they deck their cities, their houses, their possessions, and their own persons. What do the nations do with the money that we earn? They labor. They earn from us. They deck what? They deck their cities. They, that's why you have. Um, Japan is built nice. America's built nice. All these different countries have all this wealth and power, and, and their cities are decked out because of our labor. In secret, go ahead. Their houses, their possessions, and their own persons. But you got the white folks that have old money. So they have them old houses that they, ha- they pass down generation and generation from our labor. Go ahead. The more will I be angry with them for their sin, saith the Lord. So the more they do it, the most I said, the more angry I'll be with them. That goes back to double unto them in Revelations 18. Go ahead. Like as a whore envieth a right, honest, and virtuous woman. Go ahead. So shall righteousness hate iniquity when she decketh herself. This is the kingdom of iniquity back in Psalms 94. Go ahead. The throne of iniquity. Go ahead. Read again. So shall righteousness hate iniquity when she decketh herself. She put cities, her houses, her possessions, her own persons. Go ahead. And shall accuse her to her face. When he cometh that shall defend him that that diligently searcheth out every sin upon earth. The Lord show up here when their sins come to the full. That's what it's talking about. You see that poem says when she decketh herself. That's what we read in Revelation 17 last week about she decked herself with purple and scarlet and with all manner of gold and rubies. So it says so shall righteousness hate iniquity. When she decketh herself and shall accuse her to her face. Mm -hmm. So we're not telling the nations, America particularly, everything you got, you stole. And they're going to lock up a black man for stealing a babe's roof candy bar. Are you kidding me? I'm sorry. Read the next verse. I'm sorry. Next verse. Verse 51. And therefore be ye not like thereunto, nor to the works thereof. Come out of her, my people. Same thing. Next verse. For yet a little. And iniquity shall be taken away out of the earth. Nuclear fire. And righteousness shall reign among you. We'll rule in their stead. That's it. All praises. Back to Revelation 18 now. Revelation 18 and verse 9. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her. So they lived deliciously through their economics. They got an economic boom by doing trade with America. Why? Because they all got that economic are pushed because they had free slave labor in all these various countries. Go ahead. Shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. So what is the one hour is thy judgment come talking about? Raise your hand if you know. We just read it, brothers. Look at what you're reading. What is the one hour is thy judgment come talking about? Let me hear the young man with the black sweater on. Yeah, you. For in one hour is thy judgment come. Shalom. Um, death, famine, and fire. Right. Destruction. How long is it going to take, brothers? One hour. One hour. Now, I wanted y'all to see that because you got a dumb... Israelite group saying that the hour of temptation that shall come upon the earth is talking about the chip. They're You've got to be kidding me. Where are you reading this stupidity at? They're not a group. I know they're not a group. Don't That's call a, them a, group. a maggle of geese. That's it. A gaggle of geese. There's just a few Negroes thrown in a can somewhere. Can you find me that hour of temptation? Where is that? Revelation 3. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience. What is the word of the Lord's patience, brothers? The laws. And it's patient because he needs patience with us to keep these laws, to get it right to the best of our liberty, our ability. We're rehearsing the righteous acts. Read it again. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. So the hour of temptation is what we just read in Revelation. Can we go back there now? Revelation chapter 18 
and verse 10, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. For in one hour is thy judgment come. Read verse 17. Verse 17. For in one hour so great riches is come to naught, and every shipmaster, and all the company and ships and sailors, and as many as trade by sea. See that? For in one hour so great riches has come to naught. In one hour is the destruction of Babylon. Now verse 19, please. And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness. Here it comes. For in one hour is she made desolate. So the one hour is the hour of temptation that shall come upon all earth. So America is destroyed. That's what it is talking about. It's not saying you're going to get a computer chip and run around buying bread and sneakers. It ain't talking about that. The stupidity, I can't take the stupidity. We're in Revelation chapter chapter 18 and verse 10. Standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. So the one hour is thy judgment comes is the same thing as Revelation 3. Get that? Revelation 3 and 10. Thank you. Revelation 3 and 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I which is the laws in Christ. Go ahead. I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. So the hour of temptation is that when that great destruction comes. Everybody understand that? Back to Revelation 18. Now we're in verse 11. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. Where did we read that at the beginning of the lesson? Who remembers where we read something like that? About the merchants of the earth. Remember I told you at the very beginning, I said, remember this part. Shalom. Second Ezra 15 verse 44. Right. Read that for us, Isaac. Second Ezra 15 verse 44. They shall come to her and besiege her. The star and all wrath shall they pour out upon her. Then shall the dust and smoke go up unto the heaven, and all they that be about her shall bewail her. All right, that's what I'm going to go with right now, so forget that. This part here that says, and they, shall, they that be about her shall bewail her. Go back to Revelation 18. <sighs> Revelation chapter 18 and verse 10. Standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come, and the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her. Right, that's what I want. Go ahead. For no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. So now, what we're reading here about nobody buying their merchandise anymore, no man buyeth their merchandise anymore, connects back with Revelation 13. Remember the part in Revelation 13 that says that no man might buy or sell except he that has the mark of the beast. Y'all familiar with that? Yes, sir. Now he's going to explain. Read 11 again and let's read down. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all thyine wood and all manner vessels of ivory and all manner vessels of most precious wood and of brass and iron and marble and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves and souls of men. And slaves and souls of men. Now, where did we read about that earlier in only one hand? Let me just, let me just, cause I, I might say, get it all mixed up. Go to First Maccabees 341. This, this is the same thing, very similar. Now, remember, John is prophesying about future context. Maccabees is something that happened centuries ago. But it's the same happening. Go ahead. And the merchants of the country, hearing the you fame. You see that? And the merchants of the country, hearing the fame of the Greeks. Go ahead. Took silver and gold very much with servants and came into the camp to buy the children of Israel for slaves. To buy the children of Israel for slaves. Back to Revelation 18. So now. 
This goes in conjunction with Revelation 13, that no man might buy or sell. Buy or sell what? You're reading it here in Revelation 18. Start from verse 11 again, Captain. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. So to buy if their merchandise goes back to Revelation 13, buying or selling. Read. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all thine wood and all manner of vessels of ivory and all manner of vessels of most precious wood and of brass and iron and marble and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves and souls of men. Right. So remember what I want you all to remember. John the Revelator is talking about future. Future. Everybody with me so far? He's talking about Babylon. Babylon the Great would be selling slaves. When did this happen? In the 15 and 16, actually 1492, all the way up to 16... What, 83? They were still trying to do, they was doing that thing? Selling slaves up until the 60, I'll say 1600s. Everybody with me? Yes, sir. All right, I want to make sure I didn't lose nobody. So now we use 1 Maccabees 341 to give you an example of what the Greeks, what the white man did with us. Everybody understand that? Okay, verse 14 now. And the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee, and all things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee. And thou shalt find them no more at all. Come on. The merchants of these things which were made rich by her. So the merchants of these things which were made rich by her. The merchants come from where? Who can tell me where these merchants come from? Think. Uh, just think. Just think. We read it earlier. Think. This brother right here. Where are these merchants coming from that are made rich? All the other nations. Thank you. World. See how simple All the other nations. Remember. All the other nations drank of the wine of the wrath of a fornication. All the nations. So read that again. The merchants of these things, which were made rich by her, shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing, and saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. Can you show me a picture uh, on the internet of... Uh New York at night. So you got to think about what John is seeing. He sees this great city. And he says, this, read that again, Captain Isaac. And saying, alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and decked pearls. with gold, precious stones and pearls. When you look at New York City in a plane, okay, and you look down. It looks like diamonds. Read it again, Captain Isaac, so I get the thought back. And saying, alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold. Decked with gold, go ahead. And precious stones. Precious stones. Though, when you just look at that, for example, I'm gonna fix it. it looks like precious stones. Like this is worth something. Like, wow, this has never been you. Because we're looking at it from somebody who lives in this era. But you have to put yourself in John's seat. This has never been seen before or something. Like, give me another view. Give me another shot. Read again, Captain. And saying, alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. Precious stones and pearls. So you got to try to imagine, what is John looking at that makes him think he's seeing precious stones and pearls? Well, those are okay. Those are all right. Those are all right. Because I see uh, I'm getting a headache with y'all. <laughs> just go back to in. The one that you just had was fine. And the reason I, I, I didn't want these is because looking at it, you can see buildings. John is seeing something. He's not recognizing buildings. He sees diamonds and rubies. But what he's looking at is buildings and lights. He see right. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Or am I confusing y'all? He What he sees is not seeing it close enough. So he's describing it. The best as he can. When as you're on a plane and you're coming into, and you're coming into, you see the lights before you can determine if they're buildings or not. You just see a lit up area. Right. So he sees gold, precious stones, and pearls. That's how he describes it. He says, that's what I see. But we know today that what he sees is Babylon from an aerial view. He sees lights at night, and he's perceiving it as precious gold, 
pearls, and things of that nature. Read that one more time for me, Isaac. And saying, alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. So does everyone understand what I'm trying to say? All right. Where are we at, Captain? Um, verse 19. Go ahead. And no. Th- no, verse, verse 17. I'm sorry. Verse 17. For in one hour, so great riches is come to naught. So this one hour, brothers, goes back to Revelation 3 and 10 about the what? Hour of temptation, which is destruction. Go ahead. And every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stood afar off. You know why this is funny? Because there was one black man who had three ships and they got destroyed. Who remembers who he was? Marcus Garvey. He had three ships and they got jacked up. Other than that, we have no ships. Because you need them big ships to do all that loading and unloading, loading, importing and exporting. Because that's what this is talking about. Modern terminology, import, export. That's how you get big money. Read verse 17 again. For in one hour, so great riches is come to naught. And every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors. You know how diabolical... Um, What's them dude's name that was jealous of Marcus Garvey? I can flip my mind. W E B Du Bois. Randolph. Randolph. What's his name? Philip. Philip Randolph. They went to the devil, asked for ships to compete. Then they sent people in to sabotage sabotage the engines. Evil. See, Marcus Garvey was trying to take us on another another level, and the Negro who had a covenant with America said, no, we got to stop this. But I see now why they had to stop it. He would have been included in this, but no. So can somebody tell these other Israelite camps ASAP that they don't fit verse uh, 17? They're not getting riches by uh, importing export. They don't exactly. have this type of thing. So read that again. For in one hour, so great riches has come to naught. And every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stood afar off. Wait, stop. Somebody might be clever and say, but what's the brother who owns Sitco? What's his name? Sitco. Sitco Oil. Chavez. Hugo Chavez. I like that brother. I really liked him. He had ships. He's Israel. They go, but wait a minute. He had ships, so he's included in that. What they do to Hugo Chavez? I want you to see this video. Because, yeah, Hugo Chavez had ships, he, but guess what he was doing with his ships? Who remembers what Hugo Chavez did with his ships? With the Sitco oil. Anybody? Dad, go on. Does nobody in here watch the news but me? Right. He was giving oil to the poor, black and Hispanic neighborhoods. That's, and he was doing it cheap, dirt cheap. Yeah. And they killed him. Yeah, Bishop, he even did give a, uh, Haiti a lot of... Uh, cheap oil. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yes. In America, then they said that's not yeah, the exactly. that's not what we uh, agreed upon. Yeah, give me that one. That's fine. Let's see what he says. Listen, listen. Shh. I think that the first people who should read this book are our brothers and sisters in the United States, because their threat is in their own house. The devil is right at home. The devil, the devil himself is right in the house. And the devil came here yesterday. Yesterday, the devil came here. Right here. Right here. And it smells of sulfur still today. This table that I am now standing in front of. Yesterday, ladies and gentlemen, from this rostrum, the President of the United States, the gentleman to whom I refer as at the devil, came here. Talking so as he the world. They can't believe what he said. He had the ball, excuse me. He said what they were thinking. They all know he's telling the truth. Yeah, exactly. But he said it. Exactly. So my point was, he had ships. He was doing great things for the black Latino communities, and somehow he had a brain aneurysm and dropped dead. I'm like, what the hell is this? Everybody that starts trying to help us somehow mysteriously dies. Come down with a fatal case of measles. Yeah. <laughs> Even, uh, what's the other bro- brother's name? Johnny Cochran. Got a brain. Bam! He's dead. Brain aneurysm. Hey, I said fatal case of measles. Nobody caught that. 
No, nobody caught that, y'all. Saw. Can you die? Does measles kill you? No. Yeah, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, Bishop. You know, you know, with Johnny, with Johnny, he was trying to gather a lot of lawyers to fight against America to give yes. black what they deserve. I'll give another one. Aristide, the president of Haiti. The re- who knows the reason he got uh, exiled? What is the reason he got exiled from Haiti? He was bringing a lawsuit against America, France particularly, France, to pay 21 billion United States dollars in slave reparations. They said, get him out of here. Get him out. He got to go. He came to his house by night. Bonjour, negro. You got to go. They got rid of him. Got rid of him. Exiled him. He said, 21 billion U.S. They said, no, he got to go. Abby, what you got? Uh, there was a president by the name of uh, an Ecuadorian president uh, called Roldos, who actually found a way to economically unite Colombia, Venezuela, and Ecuador, and pretty much be on their own. The United States gave them airplanes, and when they went on these airplanes, it was him, his family, his uh, a couple of a couple of delegates, and that plane uh, crashed on the side of a mountain. When a plane goes down, what's the first thing they look for? The black box. The black box. Eduardo Roldos it was a pres- uh, an Ecuadorian president. Those black boxes were not; it, they, they were they did not come with the planes that America gave to this man. And they did that also to another man named uh, Chirios in Panama. They did the same thing to him. His plane crashed on the side of a mountain mysteriously. <laughs> hey, the president of uh, Libya, what's his name? Umar Gaddafi. He went to the UN and told all the African states, he said, we can create our own international monetary fund. He said, we'll call it the AMF, African Monetary Fund. You know he got killed? He, m- m- he Somehow, he became this evil dictator. And they had to kill him. Right. He bought a, a cup of bishop. coffee. The coffee was too hot and it killed him. The way how they do it is they, they do a staged uprising from within. Because right. when you speak to the people, the people are saying, what you're seeing is not happening here. Right. They'll pay a group of people um, to create an uprising and then film it and make it look like it's hostile conditions. Bring fake charges against him, send people to aid, send rebels against him, and then destroy him. And that's what they did. They beat him on live television. He was bloodied when they took him. Yeah. You should have saw the look on his face. Um, Gaddafi. 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 He was ruling for all that time. And when he tried to mobilize that bank, they surrounded him, hunted him down like a dog, and beat him in the street. They did the same exact thing in Panama. They did the exact, created a whole mess, sent their cameras over there and filmed it. They said, oh, the people are up riding this and that. That the was other. Noriega. Yeah, exactly. They, sent, they said, we got to go over there and restore democracy to a place that never had democracy in right. the first place. Exactly. Which was completely stupid. And everybody in America Nobody was saying, yeah, restore democracy. And, and that they country never had it. Never it was, had never, democracy. It was a never a democratic country. But that shows you how stupid Americans are. That's so what it shows you. I, I pointed that out to say, He's calling him a devil, but not using scriptures to call him a devil. Right. We know according to the Bible, he's a devil. But he's calling him the devil because of their practices that you people know nothing about. Right. Do you understand that they collapse the economy? They put things in place for you to lose your houses, for you to lose your jobs, for you to get sick. They do things behind the scenes that you would not believe. It makes no sense to go into what they're doing because we can't stop it. You understand? That's why we speak about the conspiracy theories. You can find so much time digging into, spend so much time digging into all the stuff they're doing. And guess what? All you need to do is find the person who controls them, which is the most high, and get on his side. Because you're not going to expose them. A lot of the, the conspiracy theories, they say the reason they put the videos out is to expose them. Once everybody knows, it'll stop. That's not what the Bible says. Right. The Bible don't say that. The Bible says the deceived and the deceiver are his. God controls them. So he's allowing them to do these things. So we don't pay them no mind. But that's why he called them a devil, because he knows the inner workings of this society. Exactly. Okay, you read it, Abiel. I don't know what we're reading. The American author and activist John Perkins, in his book, Confessions of Economic Hitman, concludes that Roldis was the assassinated because 
his plans to re reorganize the hydro hydrocarbon sector would have threatened the U.S. interests. Roldis had a union. Roldis had entered into a pact with neighboring Colombia and Peru, and a pact with the U.S. President Reagan saw as a tilt toward the Soviet Union. Just months after Roldis died, another Latin American leader who had been at odds with the U.S. interest in control of the Panama Canal, Panama's Omar, Omar Trujillo, that, that was the guy died in what was allegedly just a plane crash, which was also is perceived by some to have been a CIA-conducted assassination, again, according to John Perkins. Okay. So, who, who's Omar Torrios? Who's Roldos? President of okay, all right. That's what I wanted you to go explain it. Cause I don't know who this guy was. All right, but that's good. That links with what we're going over right now. So where we at, Captain? We're almost done. Revelation chapter eighteen and verse seventeen. Okay. For in one hour, so great riches is come to naught, and every shipmaster and all the company in ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stood afar off. Question. In Revelation 13, where it says buying and selling, no man can buy or sell. Where is that word in verse 17? In verse 17, where is buy and sell at? Trade, correct, trade. I need y'all, when y'all read, to start putting precepts together. You have to be able to do that. Read. Verse 18, and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, what city is like unto this great city? So it's letting you know that this city would be the greatest place on earth. That's why you get the Kemet community talk about Africa, but nobody wants to move over there and live there. Everybody wants to stay here because this is the greatest place on earth. Believe me, the liberties that America, as evil as she is, the liberties and freedoms, alleged freedoms that are given here, you're not given in any other country. Try running your mouth against some of these other countries in their country. Watch what happened to you. You'll be strung up or imprisoned. Captain Isaac, where we at? We're almost done here. Revelation chapter 18 and verse 19. Watch this. And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness. For in one hour she, in, she is made desolate. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. You know what's heavy about that? You might be asking yourself, why would God avenge the holy apostles on Babylon? They died in Rome. Guess what? All the people are back. They're right here. That's right. The apostles is back. The people that killed the apostles is back. So he's avenging everything on this place here. Double. Because Rome didn't get paid. They didn't, Rome didn't pay for what she did. This is a revived Rome here. Where's that scripture where That's it says? What I said in Revelation 1 and 7. He said the same thing. He said, even them that pierce me. Where's the scripture that says uh, Rome? I can't. Tag going. Tag. Somebody help me. The thought that says this is like Rome. Something like that. You know I can't quote. Mm. Come on, brothers. Come on. I'm dependent on y'all. Yeah, that sound more like All right, 13, 14. All right. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles, which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast. Wait, wait, wait. Did you get to the part? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Here it comes. Which had the wound by a sword. The wound by the sword was Rome dying. 193 AD, they fell. Rome fell. Go ahead. And did live. They came back in 1453 on up to today. Now, that is the one I wanted, but there's another one. Just somebody talk. I'm going to find something else. Bear with me. Oh, yeah. Read that. Read that. Revelation 13, 13 and 3. All right. And I saw one of his head as it were wounded to death. That was Rome. Go ahead. And his deadly wound was healed. They came back in the uh, 1400s under the Renaissance. And all the world wondered after the and beast. And all the world would thank you, brother. See there? I, I, knew, I, I know I know what I'm talking about. I just got to catch up, you know. No, we know you got it, bitch. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, we know be you doubting it. sometimes. I you see about to, You about to send us. <laughs> now, where we at in Revelation 18? <laughs> Revelation 18 and verse 20. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, 
For God hath avenged you on her. Come on. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it unto the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. So the angel took up a great millstone, and it ain't talking about them bums on 34th Street. A millstone is a big block that you roll things with, okay? He picked it up and threw it. We got to see a cartoon of that. A huge millstone, and an angel just throws it in the sea. He said, Babylon's going to be thrown down like that. She's not going to be thrown down through voting. You're not going to vote your way out of this. God says, no, violence is going to take this place down. Mm. By violence, they took this land. By violence, this land is going out. Does everybody understand that? Yes, sir. We don't? Verse 22. And the voice of harpers and musicians and of pipers and of trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee. And no craftsman of whatsoever craft he be shall be found any no more in thee. And the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all Meaning in no thee. Meaning no work, no work, no work. That's what it means. And the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. Go ahead. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in Ain't thee. Ain't no more weddings going to be done anymore here. Go ahead. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth. Meaning the nations. Go ahead. For by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. Wow. Wait a minute. For by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. Give me that Nahum 3 and 4. Here's a precept for that. See, what we call uh, television, political policies, amendments, things of that nature, God says this is all sorcery. This is all sorcery. That's the biblical name for it. So everybody's bewitched. Everybody, including your mothers and fathers, are under a spell. The only spell breaker mm -hmm. is the Bible. It's the only spell breaker. Nahum, chapter 3 and verse 4. Because of the multitude of the whoredoms of the well-favored harlot. The well-favored harlot is the great whore that sat upon the beast with seven heads and ten horns, which is Babylon. Well-favored harlot. Where does everybody want to come to? America. There it is. Well-favored. Everybody loves this place. Go ahead. The mistress of witchcraft. The mistress of what? Of witchcrafts. Uh-huh. That selleth nations. Ooh, wait a minute. That selleth nations. Didn't we just read that in Revelation 18? That sells slaves and souls of men. Read it again, Captain. Because of the multitude of the whoredoms of the well-favored harlot, the mistress of witchcrafts that selleth nations through her whoredoms and families through her witchcrafts. Damn, y'all see that? Do y'all see what we're reading here in the Bible? What I want y'all to understand that our people, we are under a spell as well. Not only the nations are under a spell, but our people are under a spell. The term graduate, like we all graduate, want to go through a graduation, is made up of two words. Graduate or graduation is made up of two words. Graduation, two words. The first word being gradual. The second word meaning being indoctrinate or indoctrination. Graduation, gradual indoctrinations. That's what they do to us, okay? Everybody understand what I'm saying? That's what this whole system is, the indoctrination gradually on America's goals, ideals, beliefs. They start us at a young age, from the age, when we start watching TV, three, four, well, maybe one, one, I don't know. In the mama's womb, you're watching TV, okay? The media is referred to as uh, propaganda persuasion. Some books I've read call it a system of propaganda persuasion persuasion, which uses indoctrination techniques on our people and influence us to accept America's belief system, their goals, their ideas. That's why when you hear black people speak, just any old black man or black woman, Latin man, on the street, whatever comes out their mouth is nine times out of ten television. Something they saw on television. And they, and then they, and they think that those thoughts, here's how bad it is. The witchcraft is so bad, they think that those thoughts are their thoughts. But it's not their thoughts. It's the I, thoughts of I, what this... I got my own opinion. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that movie Inception, they showed you that. Very good. Exactly, exactly. 
Esau gets slaves to voluntarily accept and behave how they want them to behave. A Klansman told his woman, said, listen, sit down. You don't have no opinion. He said, if your television breaks down, you have no opinion. Bishop, like the callers that call into the radio show, the bishop had just dropped some heavy, heavy Bible doctrine on him. And this dumb black woman comes up with the Gilgamesh epics. Right. <laughs> if you look that up, it's a book about poems. Right. Stupid poems. And she comes speaking about the guilt. She try to throw it off like she's coming with something deep. And another dumb Negro that will listen to her will believe that she dropped something heavy. Right, exactly. exactly. Okay, but the bishop did the right thing. He just dismissed her to keep the audience that he had awake. All praises, all praise. I don't know how many of y'all heard that show yesterday. Yes, yeah, just dumb callers calling in with their opinions and stuff that the white man told them. Mm -hmm. So we almost finished Revelation 18, or did we finish it? I think we got one more verse. Verse 24. And in her was found the blood of prophets right. and of saints and of all that was slain upon the earth. So God is judging the blood of Peter, Paul, James, John, all of them here. Be why? Because they're all here. So what they did not pay for back then, even from the time of 70 AD, they're going to pay for it. Now, that's why it says double unto her. Everybody understand that? There's some heavy stuff here. Shalom, Israel. I'm Eldon Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.